Davey Martinez, have a seat in the principal's office. I'd like to have a few words with you after you made a decision yesterday for the lineup that made absolutely no sense. I'll tell you exactly what that is right after this. You are Locked On Nationals, your daily Washington Nationals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. A championship team is about each player being a perfect fit. Same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit. Only available to U.S. customers. Eligible items only. Exclusions do apply. And thank you guys for making Locked On Nationals your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your podcast. And we are part of the Locked On Podcast Network where you get your team every day. And on today's show, I am joined by Toby Altizer. Later in the show, we're just going to talk about how much of a better product this Nationals team has been. But for this second segment, we're going to get into Davey Martinez decision making on the bullpen as there have been some major question marks between Toby and I that we're going to really hash out in that second segment. But first, we got to hash it out again with Davey Martinez about his decision making. And that is Toby Altizer. How we doing, my friend? Doing good, man. It's good to talk Nats again. Good to talk Nats again. And obviously, you know where I'm going with this, Toby. We've talked about it. I think we both share the same opinion because we know this by now. Patrick Corbin now has a track record with Riley Adams that dates back to 2022. In 2022, Riley Adams, when he caught Patrick Corbin, Patrick Corbin finished with a 4-2-3 ERA, which might not sound great, but then you look at the other half, Kiber Ruiz, he finished with an 8 ERA. Batters batted 259 when Riley Adams caught Patrick Corbin with Kiber Ruiz. They batted 362, and most importantly, they finished with a 959 OPS with Ruiz behind the plate and with Riley Adams, you may ask, it was a 755 on base plus slugging. Now we fast forward to 2023, and it is similar numbers yet again. Two starts for Riley Adams behind the dish for Patrick Corbin. He's got a 365 ERA. And with Kibert Ruiz now through six starts, he has a 534 ERA. So, Toby, Davey Martinez has these numbers. He knows it. You have to know it by now. The common fan, you and I, obviously, we're diehards, but there are common fans out there who recognize that Riley Adams is the guy for Patrick Corbin, and it's not even close. What is Davey Martinez doing right now? Yeah, I mean, I think it gives a built-in day off for Kiebert Ruiz to have every fifth day off, just giving Corbin his own personal catcher. I don't know that I'm as up in arms at, with it as you are, but, I mean, if the numbers are pointing this way, to Corbin's credit yesterday, he actually finished with a decent line, finished the game fairly well. You know, it didn't look like he was going to get off to a good start. First inning, a little bit rough there. Maybe some of that's due to C.J. Abrams not being able to get it over to first base without bouncing it, which is another thing that we could discuss. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm not as up in arms, but when you have numbers like that and you can almost basically bake in a day off for – Cabot Ruiz every fifth day and work that around and it improves the product on the field improves your chances of winning because for whatever reason Patrick Corbin is much better with Riley Adams behind the plate I think you have to go with that I I, I don't know I mean I, I I'm not sure why Patrick Corbin is that much better with Riley Adams behind the plate do you have a reason why so I, I was actually talking with the listener about this last night when we were discussing this during the game, and I almost feel like it's just a matter of Riley Adams being a bigger target. And, and some people who, who rely on sliders, they may just feel a little more comfortable with a bigger body behind the plate blocking the ball. But even then, Kibet Ruiz is the much better defensive catcher in my mind. I don't think it's the way that he calls games or anything that throws him off. Like It, it just doesn't really make sense. Because Kiebert Ruiz is undoubtedly the better option defensively. 
And offensively, we're going to have to talk about it. It's not even close. But at, at this point, it's been a year and a half of this. And you date back to 2019, Jan Gomes was his primary catcher. It wasn't yeah. Kurt Suzuki, and he looked a lot better with Jan Gomes behind the plate as well. The numbers back that up. So I just think it's more of a comfort thing. Like, I, I can't really explain it at this point, but I, I just don't understand why Davey Martinez doesn't recognize that and continue to put out Riley Adams because this team is not that bad. Like, you can win games. And Patrick Corbin, as you said earlier, he was great last night. Like, he was really good, in my opinion, for what we expected. It was a tough first inning, but as you said, C.J. Abrams kind of booted a ball here and there and could have been a lot better, obviously. We're definitely going to talk about that because I think you and I both have similar opinions on what we think about that so far. But it just doesn't really make sense, the decision-making. And these are things that we really come up with when it comes to Davey Martinez. A lot of the decision making in his managerial stay here so far has been pretty bad. And at this point, it's starting to really shine through. And we're going to talk about that with the bullpen later, but it just doesn't make sense to me at this point why you keep on throwing out Kiber Ruiz when you have Riley Adams, who is undoubtedly the better catcher for Patrick Corbin. Well, and Kiber Ruiz has caught a lot early this season. He really hasn't had tons of days off. And if you can bake in one out of every five days off for Cabert Ruiz, I think that'd be a good thing. Just, just because every there's not Yadier Molina's out there. You know, no. he's like really unique in the fact that he would just catch every single game, no problem. You could pencil him in the lineup. I don't know that this early in his career, at this point where this team is, that you necessarily want to do that with Cabert Ruiz. I mean, this is the catcher of the future. So do I really want him behind the plate every single day in 2023 as opposed to maybe 2025, 2026 when this team might be contending again? Do I really want to have that wear and tear on him of going out there every single day when you can at least give him four out of every five days? That's fine. I'm not saying that you shouldn't play him a majority of the time, but give him some days off and every time Corbin goes to the mound, that can be one or you know, maybe feel it out every now and then. But I think, you know, Davey likes to use his guys. We're going to talk about that with the bullpen. Mm -hmm. But maybe he should be a little bit smarter with how he uses the catchers and Patrick Corbin starts. Yeah, and I thought about this. I was like, well, maybe, because this was earlier in the season as we saw this. And I, I've already been all over this Riley Adams thing. I've been watching the numbers for about a year now. And it's just been the same every yeah. time. And, and you really start to notice it once you figure out those stats. But I thought about this earlier in the year, and I was like, well, maybe Kiber Ruiz can, and if this is a lot easier said than done, maybe he can learn first base or, or just have him DH. But then do you, can you really afford to have Joey Manessis out of the lineup at this point? And asking that myself that two weeks ago, I was like, yeah, we can, because he was in a terrible slump. But obviously he's starting to heat up a little bit. He had a home run in Arizona, a huge one, in fact, game-winning one uh, on Sunday. So that was my kind of solution to that problem. Because if he didn't want Kibet Ruiz bad out of the lineup, if that's the situation, then I would say, we'll stick him at first base or DH him. But now well, Joey Manessis and Dominic Smith, in my opinion, is just too valuable of a fielder to take him out of the lineup at this point. Well, and then the issue is if he does play first base, if you were to consider that, are you carrying a third catcher? I don't know that you really want to do that. That's true. Yeah. So, and the other thing too, I love Kibet Ruiz his bat is not good enough for first base right now. He no. needs, he's, a, he's a good catcher. He's a good hitting catcher. He's not good enough to be, be playing first base every day. So, I mean, it's not like Dom oh. Smith's there in the world on fire, but no, he's, no. <laughs> a, he's also playing good defensively, like you said. Yeah, I, I don't think that they should move him full time to first base, but I was just saying in that scenario to where yeah. Patrick Corbin's on the mound, maybe you have Keeper Ruiz give first base a shot. I don't know, but now you said it. We've both been talking about it. Davey Martinez and the bullpen usage, it just really leaves your head just kind of miffed. You, you don't know what to expect anymore with Davey Martinez and the bullpen decisions going on. So Toby and I, we're going to get into that. But before we do that, I have to tell you guys about our friends over at So Rare. And 
So Rare is just a really revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike other fantasy baseball platforms, So Rare managers truly own their fantasy experience, collecting, buying, selling, and competing with player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards. Win or lose, you still own your cards, and there's no cost to play, which is very critical in my mind. Head to SoRare.com slash LockedOn. That's spelled S-O-R-A-R-E.com to draft your team a free player card, set your lineup, and start competing today to win F- epic rewards. Again, that's SoRare.com slash LockedOn to start playing today. And now we get into it with Toby Altizer as we continue to discuss the Nationals bullpen and Toby let's just get right into it the usage of Mason Thompson so far in my mind has been why this guy has been struggling I've seen it with Mason Thompson I know what this guy can do but when you're 24 25 years old this is your first full season in the major leagues you cannot be put out there like your Josh Hader in his prime. You cannot be used the way that he has been used so far. Because as of right now, he has more innings than a starter, Chad Cool. And yes, that has to do with the past week and the usage of it, using him two to three innings. But that just doesn't make sense because that's not the role that we want him to do. We don't want him stretching over multiple innings. Am I wrong for that? No, I mean, I think when he's at his best... His velocity has gone down a little bit because he's trying to be a little bit more pinpoint. And early in the season, you could see that he was hitting his spots. He hasn't hit his spots recently. And I know he was trained as a starter. And so maybe that's why Davey thinks he can go give him three innings. And I, I, I get some of the logic for Davey early in the season is, you know, if we can get a guy to go five or six and then we can have just one arm carry the rest of the way, then we save the rest of the bullpen. The problem is, when you consistently do that with the same guy and Mason Thompson, then you ruin Mason Thompson in a way, you know, and yeah. he uses a lot of the same guys at the back end, which we're going to get into in just a second. But with Mason Thompson, you know, I think maybe he needs to get a, a couple weeks off, maybe a phantom IL stint or something yeah. like that. Cause you know, he just has not been good recently. And I, you know, I mean, at the same point as you, you want to say it's Davey's fault, like at the same point, like this dude's got to go in there and throw strikes when he yeah. gets the opportunity. So I think it's a little bit of blame on both sides, but I agree. I'm not a fan of how Davies decided to use Mason Thompson this year. Yeah, since April 12th, right now, he's got a 5-4 ERA since April 12th, and that comes in just over 13 innings, coming in at 13 and a third. So he's been used a lot. And for a young guy, like I, I was kind of making this comparison the other day. When you're at a restaurant, you see the daily specials. Those Daily specials are daily specials because they aren't as special when you roll them out five days a week. Mason Thompson is kind of in that department where he's a young guy. You have to treat him like a daily special at this point. He's not someone that you just throw out there every time you have a lead. And yes, he is a great arm. But when these young bullpen guys, we've seen it with Tanner Rainey in the past when he started to really hone in on what he became back in 2020 and and was becoming the closer and really pitching in meaningful innings, they started to throw him out there every night. And guess what? They eventually started to rock him. And then guess what happened last year? He hurt his elbow and had Tommy John surgery. So this bullpen usage so far, as we've seen with Mason Thompson, and then also on the other hand is Hunter Harvey. We're starting to see these guys get hit around a little bit more. And this is the question that I think a lot of people balance, Toby. Is it just because these are our go-to guys? Like, do we really not have anyone else to take in these situations where it's a one-run lead late in the game? You want to put your best pitchers out there, and that's Mason Thompson or Hunter Harvey. But at this point, Mason Thompson, his he's losing his command, as we saw last night, multiple wild pitches, and it's just not the same anymore. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's two things here. Those are your A guys, and I've said it before, with this team – they're different than last year in that they're in a lot more ball games. So mm-hmm. credit to them. 
you do want to use your best guys because you want to try to win every ball game you can. You know, this team's still going to probably be close to 100 losses, be somewhere right around there. But you want to try to win every ball game you can. But at the same point, if you're in most ball games, which the Nationals have been this year, you just can't use the same guys every night. And the other thing is, I understand that we're still learning a little bit of what Hunter Harvey is. We're still learning what Mason Thompson is. Those guys are still developing. But you got to give other guys a chance, too. Like, I know you're a big Thaddeus Ward guy. I try Mm -hmm. to give him some opportunities. I mean, look, he's going to be with the big league roster just because of the Rule 5 drafts and all that goes on with that. So give him some opportunities. Give Carl Edwards more opportunities. Maybe that's a trade piece later on down the road. Like, you got to give the other guys real chances, even if it's just to see if you got something for a trade piece, something for the future, and you got to give these guys rest because going four out of five days like Finnegan did the other day, that you can't be doing that. You know, you no. shouldn't be really being used more than three to four times a week. And Davey, if he could, would pitch him every single day. He could, and seriously. And Carl Edwards Jr. has actually been really good so far this season. Obviously, he's had some issues, and, and he's gotten out of some really lucky jams, you could say, as we saw last week. But at the end of the day, this guy is pitching to the tune of a 2 ERA at this point, or maybe even just under, if I check that correctly. But there are pieces in this bullpen, and as you said, it's great to be competitive, but you have to stay competitive because one of the reasons as to why this Nationals team has been pretty solid so far, or at least the first half of the first few months of the season, is because of guys like Mason Thompson and Hunter Harvey and Carl Edwards Jr. It's just, if you throw those top two guys every night, it's not the same. So I would like to see Davey utilize Carl Edwards Jr. just a little bit more. And even as you said, Thaddeus Ward. A lot of people are like, oh, well, his command is out there. Like, well, I guess no other reason to put him out there then, right? No, he should be out there pitching meaningful innings. I like what he brings. And yes, he does walk some guys, but who doesn't? Look at Mackenzie Gore. He walks a lot of guys. His walk rate is way up there, but he still gets the job done. And Thaddeus Ward has done that as well. And honestly, I've really liked what I've seen from him in just a limited stint. So I would like to see Davey Martinez trust some of his guys a little bit more than what he has so far, because this is not that bad of a team. He's just, he has to play the hits. Yeah, and to your point, you mentioned Mackenzie Gore. I think that's one thing that goes into this as well. Big fan of Gore, big fan of Gray, what they've done so far. Their next step in development is stop throwing 110 pitches in six innings. Let's get you through seven. Let's get you into the eighth. You know, the fact that Corbin's, not his last start, two starts ago, was the first time a Nationals pitcher had gotten into the seventh, a first time a Nationals starting pitcher had gotten into the eighth inning. Mm -hmm. That's why you cook a bullpen. You know, when your guys... You can't always depend on, you know, when Chad Cool was in the lineup, he wasn't necessarily always giving you at least five innings. You know, yeah. you need at least five, six every time, but you'd like at least one or two guys to give you seven, maybe one guy pop out and give you eight. And right now the problem with the rotation is Gray and Gore have shown you really good flashes this year, but they're only guaranteed to give you six at most. And that's kind of the cap. I'd like to see them start pitching into the seventh. You'd like to see Corbin continue what he's doing and continue pitching into the seventh. And I think that helps a little bit because Davey doesn't have to use four and five arms. Instead, he's using two and three guys each and every day. And so that's how you help that bullpen as well. So instead of going to the usual Mason Thompson, Hunter Harvey, and even Carl Edwards Jr., who would you like to see get more time out of the bullpen? Yeah, I mean, I think I want to see Thaddeus Ward a little bit more. You're right, though. He does have some command issues. But, I mean, I I think it's the same cast of characters. But to my point with the starting pitching, if you can go out there and you can get seven strong and you're looking at eight, nine, obviously Harvey Finnegan is your premier premier duo. That's your top guys where you're Mm going to go eight, nine, Harvey Finnegan. But Edwards needs to get more chances there. And try out some of these other guys. You know, Jake Irvin's shown that he can be a starter for the time being. I'd expect that at some point he'll probably come back down to earth as a starter and maybe he'll come back to the bullpen and maybe get him into some opportunities like that. Who knows? Maybe he sticks in the rotation. I'd love that, obviously. (laughs) But, I mean, just just try different things out because who knows? Maybe you catch lightning in a bottle with one guy. And like I said, it doesn't necessarily have to mean that this guy is going to be part of the 2025 Nationals as a premier setup guy. He might be a trade piece at the end, exactly. you know, the, the deadline here. So just try out different people and see what happens. 
I totally agree with that. And, of course, the Nats play the Giants today at 345. You can catch that game and every pitch of the Nats hometown broadcast on SiriusXM and the SXM app. Just search the Nationals. And, Toby, we talked about Davey Martinez, the bullpen, and sort of the faults that he's had. But at the end of the day, this Nationals team has been much better than what we expected. So let's give out some roses here next as we'll be a little more positive and we're going to talk about the good things for this Nationals team. Don't, don't go anywhere. We're coming back right after this. And now we get back into it with Toby Altizer from 106.7 The Fan and District on Deck. You can catch his work over there as he does a very good job blogging about this team. And obviously, Toby Altizer, we have been a ton better than what we expected because I went into this year. I didn't think we were going to lose a hundred games. I thought we'd lose like around 97 games, which yeah. is, you know, three game difference. So be it. But this team has been much better than any of us have anticipated. And honestly, it's just been the product on the field in my mind. What am I missing there? Am I missing anything that also kind of goes into it as to why this team is just a better watch? No, I mean, I think it's just the on-field product. You know, I went through this a little bit the other day. I want to six seven the fan. It's really in all facets. The pitching has been better. Watching guys like Gore and Gray every couple of days, two out of every five is fun. Corbin's stepped it up a little bit. A guy like Jake Irvin stepping in. It makes you miss Cade Cavalli because we could have yeah. three out of every five with a Gore, Gray, and Cavalli type thing. But the pitching's been better. The, I think probably the biggest upgrade from last year to this year is the infield defense and i know it's a lot saying from yesterday with what happened with cj abrams but cj's been solid at short uh, jamer has been good at third luis garcia looks like he can play second base dom smith has helped out a lot there the one thing that i have an issue with and this comes off of last night's game with cj i think he has the arm strength for whatever reason he bounces a lot of throws over there mm -hmm. i wonder if he's a little worried about unleashing it. maybe he doesn't have the most accurate arm so he throws it more at 70% and tries to get it over there on a hop so he can be a little more accurate. But I need to see start seeing him unleash it over there at shortstop because if you look at some of his stat cast numbers, his throw his throwing arm is about middle of the pack for shortstop, mm -hmm. which is not great. Yeah. But I feel like he's got more in there. But he, even so, I think the defense has improved, which has helped out the pitching. And the offense, I mean, you're seeing Luis Garcia take real strides at the plate. And I think overall, this has just been a fun team to watch because they're playing professional baseball. Last year, at times, they weren't playing MLB professional baseball. You could, yeah, like you said, just turn on the circus music. But we've seen much better baseball this season. It's been fun to watch. And, and obviously, you said something there, C.J. Abrams. And I do want to get into that real quick. I said we're going to be positive. This isn't so positive. But C.J. <laughs> Abrams, I've started to notice that when he turns a double play, that's when he kind of starts to – leave that ball low and he's starting to bounce it over to Dominic Smith and Dominic Smith has now bailed him out multiple times over the last week. And I saw that six of nine errors coming from CJ Abrams has come with Corbin on the mound, <laughs> which is like that guy cannot catch a break and not talking about CJ's. I'm talking about Patrick Corbin as also he took a line drive off the forearm that then hit him in the face. He stayed in the game. That guy is tough as nails, but God, he cannot catch a break. The CJ just keeps on making errors when he's out there. And it's got to be so frustrating. But I've noticed his footwork is a little bit off. Like, as he turns a double play, he doesn't set his feet. And this is something to where this is like a nerdy baseball thing. But I really notice it from him when he it just kind of rushes his throw. And that ends up either sailing it or leaving it short, which he's left it short many times this year. We just don't really notice it because Dominic Smith has been that real – placeholder at first base and he's done an awesome job defensively and that is why I'm not taking Dominic Smith out of the lineup because I know we talked about this yesterday how we want to see more from Dominic Smith at the plate we need to see more but you can't take him out of the lineup at this point for saving every damn throw that comes his way it seems like two things off of that we were talking about Abrams and we're talking about Dominic Smith mm -hmm. I want to give Dominic Smith huge credit for yesterday the Giants were shifting him, and he had three professional at-bats. The one was kind of a squeaker Very. that just got up the middle. But first at-bat just hits a line drive on the ground where the third baseman would have been if they didn't shift. 
That's a professional AB. Then later on, dumps a little single into left field, another professional at bat. If he's going to have that kind of approach, I'm totally fine with it because you know who needs to learn those sort of things? C.J. Abrams. Mm -hmm. C.J. yesterday against Logan Webb looked completely outmatched. The weird part is we've seen C.J. hit a, what was it, seventh or eighth inning grand slam when they're behind by three. We've seen C.J. come up with game-winning RBIs. So why is it that a second inning plate appearance, he strikes out on three pitches and looks completely outmatched, but he comes up late and he's able to come up with clutch hits. I wonder if it's an approach thing. I, I, I don't quite understand what the difference is in CJ, but I'd like to see that growth. And if a guy like Dominic Smith is putting together professional ABs like he is, that's something that he can teach the young guys is, hey, if they're giving you the left side there, just dump a little single into left field mm-hmm. every single time and we'll take that. Exactly. And I, and I think that's more of just an approach thing, as you said, because I, I'm in the minority on this. When they're shifting on you, like, as you said, you got to take that. Like, I don't understand why someone like CJ Abrams, if they're going to, I mean, obviously they're not shifting the way they used to, but if that left side of the infield is wide open, third base is playing a little deep, you better bump that down the line because they're not going to get you. And especially against the Giants, as of yesterday, they led the MLB in errors. These guys are not that good of a fielding group. And obviously we've seen that over the last year or two with that Giants team. Make them make the play because they have a track record of not making the easy plays as we've seen it. So that's what I would like to see a little bit more. And that really has to go with the approach of C.J. Abrams. I think you nailed that right on the head, Toby. Well, and two with C.J., think about Trey Turner when he was here in D.C. If Trey didn't strike out... It was a close play at first every single time. Mm-hmm. Even if it were just a routine ground ball to the second baseman, CJ's not that fast in terms no. of Trey fast, but he is still fast. So if he hits something to the left side, that shortstop, that third baseman has a clock ticking in their head where they know they got to get it over to first base and it can lead to errors. You can beat it out sometimes if it's not well hit. And my thing with CJ is we're still learning what he is, but from what we've seen so far, he's not going to be a slugging guy at shortstop. No. He's going to be more so you know, project if you project what he can be, he's going to probably be a leadoff two hole hitter that kind of just hits for contact and steals bags. I need to see him unleashed on the base paths and just find a way to get on base and steal. You know, if you're not going to hit doubles, turn your singles into doubles by stealing second base. Mm -hmm. Smart. Exactly. And that, that is something to where this nationals team as a whole really lacks, but thank you guys for making locked on nationals. Your first listen every day as we are free and available wherever you get your bot, your podcast, the Nats play the giants today at three 45. You're going to want to catch that game. And as always, you can catch every pitch of the Nats hometown broadcast with Sirius XM on the SXM app. All you have to do is search nationals. Toby, you think we get a win today? I hope so. I hope so. I, we got Josiah Gray going, so I'll so, say yeah. It's a great day, baby. It's a great day. All right. For Toby Altizer, I am Ryan Clary. We will catch you guys on the flip side. Have a good one.